And I want you to go with me in this first stage to look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Yes? Just go ahead and read it. Ephesians chapter 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I, I, I want you to know that God has decided that everyone that is going to be a part of this body must be in Christ. God has said it before the world was founded that you must come to Christ. And that is the selection process. It is not about how much you can try to do good on your own whether you believe in Christ or not, as far as you can do, you cannot come through without Jesus Christ. You will not be a part. Jesus Christ began by selection. God selects those who are going to be a part of this church. Select them through Jesus Christ. And the Lord has called you through Christ. And this is very significant. And that is why Jesus spoke to the disciples in John chapter 14, verse, verse 6. Look at what he says in John chapter 14, verse 6. The Lord Jesus Christ declared it. Yes? Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. Jesus Christ is speaking about the selection process. That it is in him and through him that everyone who is going to be a part of this church, this glorious church, must come into. And so I want you not to deceive yourself concerning your loved ones who have not come to Christ, who do not even desire to come to Jesus, whom you are trying to use emotion to believe that they are children of God because they were created by God, who may even say, well, I believe in Jesus, but you know that Christ is not in them. I want you to come out of deception because they will be, they are not part of the body of Christ until they have accepted Jesus Christ and become part of that selection process. If you understand what the Lord is saying, that he, Jesus, is the, 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 the way, the truth, and the life. Because it, this is the selection process. For anyone to come in, the person must come through Jesus Christ. This is this is period. You must come to Christ. And this is why you cannot rest. You can no longer keep quiet of your loved one, of those who are within your orbit, the friend, your, anyone you interact with. You must let them come to Christ or they are lost. They will not be part of the glory that is coming. They will be lost. God is waiting and God is telling us about the selection process. Jesus says it's about him, Jesus, and no one else. And you cannot come into the Father and to the Father. You cannot be in the Father, part of the group without him, Jesus Christ. So the Lord is saying to you to consider yourself, do you have Jesus? Because this is the selection process. And this is one way when you look at what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 
verses 26 and 27, you will have the picture of this selection process. Colossians chapter 1, 26 and 27, yes? Even the mystery which hath which been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's a mystery that the world did not know. The, the people who even sought God in the Old Testament could not, underst could not understand this mystery. This mystery was the, the selection process, the divine selection process of God. God reaching out of the, 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 the outside the box. The, the box was the people of God, the people of promise, the, the covenant people of Israel. They were the people that God decided to break the barrier and include everyone on the face of the earth. Because those who were before Christ did not know the plan of God. It was a secret, a divine secret. And God revealed this divine secret, and that secret was the Gentiles, everyone who was not of the Jew, to become a part of the body, of glory, the body of Jesus Christ. And the Lord brought us in, and let me tell you something, and the only guarantee of this hope is the presence of Jesus Christ in the life of a man. In fact, God changed the entire process. It was no longer by the reason of birth through Abrahamic bloodline. It is now the reason of the presence of Christ in a man's life that determine whether the person is a part of the body for glory. If you do not have Jesus Christ in you, there's no hope. That is the selection process determines that you must have Christ in you. The presence of Jesus must be inside the person for this hope to be in, to be alive, to have this living hope. Now, let me tell you something. There are a number of people, unfortunately, who are in Christian faith, who pray who are trying to have faith in the Lord, not for the hope of glory, not for the hope of inheritance of eternal life, but what they can get in this world. And this is not why you are selected. This is not the reason for the, the, the selection process. It is for the hope of glory beyond this life. And so if you are in Christ for a show, just to, that ends here without you making it to glory, you would have been a, 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 the most miserable. And this is what the Lord spoke, speaks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. If, it's, if in this world only you have hope in Christ, because you want healing, you want protection. You want breakthrough. You, you want to be free from demons. But you are not going to make it to glory. The only hope you have is ends in this, in this life, in this world, in this natural life. You are the most pitiable or most, or you are one of the most to be pitied in, in, in life. It would have been a wasted life. And I want us to look at it and read it in in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse nineteen. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, 
We are all men most miserable. Hmm. Hmm. Are you are you pretending to be in Christ? And you do not understand the selection process of God preparing his church for glory and preparing a glorious church? Are you deceiving yourself by thinking that you can just be a part so that God will help you so that you'll be able to go through the process of this life but you care less about the life that is coming? I want you to know that God wants you to understand the selection process by which God is preparing a glorious church. And I, I'm, 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 going to, I'm, I'm going to round up this first part by us looking at First Peter. If you look at First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, you will see what the Lord has done in this sense of the selection process in preparing the church. Yes? But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. Look at the divine selection process. The Lord decided to choose you, not for anything you can even think about. In fact, none of us will be able to explain in detail why Jesus Christ looked at us and chose us. Why did he choose me of all people? Why did he choose you? Why does he still sustain you in faith with all your carelessness? Why does he still keep me in him and still agree to prepare me as a part of the body being prepared for glory? Why? Because... He, he, he alone knows. He alone knows the detail. But the Lord is saying you need to understand his process of preparation. That one of them is the selection. And that you are a part of what God is selecting. You were nothing. He made you something. I was nothing. He made me something. And that is what he, God, decides to do so that you can understand and begin to realize and give yourself to this preparation process for glory. The church is being prepared for glory. The Lord Jesus Christ is preparing a glorious church. And I want you to recognize it. When he, Jesus, spoke to his disciples in John Chapter 15, verse 16. He says something to them. Yes? John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Amen. I did the choosing and this is very important that you were not the one that initiated the process God did for what reason for what what were the criteria God saw in choosing you and I I don't know the details we can say a few things the, the scripture says about our response. Our response to his love. But not why he actually in the first instance came to us. He, we did not go to him first. He came to us first. Why? Why would you trample on this mercy and grace of God? Why would you not pay attention? 
Why would you lose this awesome and wonderful opportunity to be a part of the glorious church? Why would you allow a moment of pleasure and a moment of carelessness to deprive you of eternal glory? Why? Why? He said, you did not choose me. I chose you and ordained you because I'm preparing you for something for myself. And this is why every believer must understand the preparation process that begins with selection. The Lord himself is the one that chooses and calls you to himself. And then he begins, once you come into the body of Christ, he will now begin the, the next stage of preparation. And that is the stage where we, I want us to look at where we read in that Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, where uh, if you begin to read from verse 25, look at from verse 25, 26, and 27, yes? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. The next stage, I want you to follow what the Lord is speaking to us. This, this sounds more of a teaching than a, 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 an evangelical preaching. And that is why the Lord wants to sow the seed in you. Not just excitement, but you need to recognize and receive. The next stage is this, the next the stage of purification. The purification. When the Lord brings you to himself by the first set of process. He does not want you to ever go back to the former nature of sin, the nature of darkness, the nature of filthiness, the nature of Satan. He does not want you to go back to the nature of sin. He knows there's going to be, there, there's going to be a struggle and fight throughout Yesterday we spoke about the, the battle, the emotional battle, which whether you are in Christ or not, you have to be fighting this emotional battle. And God knows that he does not want you to lose the battle and go back to what you were before he, he, he brought you to himself. So God has a, a process in this stage when he he, he, he beautifies his bride. The Lord beautifies his bride. Now, what does he do? The first time is that when you come, he begins to do a, a what you may call a cutting process. A pruning process. It starts with pruning. The pruning is a a, a, a a, a, a process. It, it is an act of cutting and removing and reorganizing some part of a tree in order to present the tree in the way for better productivity and better life. That is what the gardener, the, the vine dresser does in every choice vine. It goes to cut off certain 
parts and branches in order to beautify and prepare the vine tree and it to produce more and to be more productive and to be the best of what it has been planted to be. And this is where the Lord himself is doing. Now, it, 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 my, my, my knowledge and my practice in the farm, in agriculture, because I have been a part of this, I know that when you use a, 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 a tool, a pruning tool to, to cut any part of a tree, a living tree, that tree is surely going to react. The sap, some, some fluid will begin to exude from that part that is removed or that is touched or that is cut to show that wound had, had occurred. There is a process that goes on in the life of a believer that creates wound and it is called divine wound of life that will wound you in order to make you the best. God may allow you to go through pain in order for you to be the best. God will want you to depart and, you know, remove yourself from things that, that used to bring pleasure to the flesh and comfort to the flesh. The thing that will it, it, it make you feel all right, that will gratify the flesh. The Lord will want to cut that off. The, want, the Lord wants to deprive and shut down that supply line so that the, the carnal nature will die. The carnal nature will be removed. And as human beings, it can be very painful becomes very painful. You, you, you feel the pride. You feel discomfort. And you feel pain. You, 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 you feel that, look, it, this is very... You look at every other person in the flesh who seem to be enjoying life, in quote, who seem to be comfortable, who even deride you and mock you, that look at you. You say you are in Christ, but you are not enjoying life because they don't know what life is. And you who are supposed to know what life is, you are ignorant. And so they are now the one defining life for you. And then you, you listen to them, you get very discouraged and very weakened and decide to say, you know, it's true. Because you don't understand that life is not what they are doing. What they are getting is not life, it's death. And if you think, if you think I'm just speaking, I want you to hear what the scripture himself says. Because I'm not the one, I'm not speaking of my own. I'm speaking the word of God. In Romans chapter 8, I want you to look at the Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 8. Romans 8, 5 to 8. So you see what we are talking about. Yes? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, 
neither indeed can be. If you look at that, when those who are not in Christ present a life of comfort, a, 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 a life of glamour, and show you that you are the one suffering because you are deprived of the pleasure of the flesh. You are deprived of the, the, the materials of the world because you are not getting it. And then you begin to you begin to look at them. Remember what the Bible is saying. That you are not of the carnal nature anymore. You are of the spirit. Because the Lord has called you out of darkness to light. Out of death to life. God has brought you into life by giving you a new life in Jesus Christ. You are no longer the former person you used to be. And so you are to walk in the spirit. The Lord is saying to you, you must walk in the spirit. Because if you go by their own suggestions of the flesh, you will die. You will resist the Holy Spirit. And you will lose the nature by which you were selected to be a part of the body of Christ. And when you lose that nature, you are heading to destruction. You are heading to you, you are heading to shame and not to glory. So what we are saying is that you need to understand that the pruning process may be painful. God will not let you be who you used to be. Sometimes God will purposely deprive you of the things that in the natural realm make the natural and the carnal man comfortable and glad. Because the Lord wants to focus you to himself. He wants you to be for him and not for the world. And I want you to understand that the glamour of the world and the things in the world have never been in line with the will of God. And that's why the Lord wants you and I as a part of the body of Christ that love not the world, nor the things in the world. Because if anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in that person. The things that are in the world are lost of the flesh, lost of the eyes, and the pride of life. I, I, I want you to recognize that the pruning is what God is doing and continue to do with the individual members of this body that he wants to prepare for glory and is preparing as a glorious church. When we talk about church, Church is not a denomination or, or name of a building or just a ministry only. The church is looking at the, the body of true believers, as I have defined it, coming from every group, every ministry, every denomination that truly believe in Christ. And again, I say it individuals who Christ is in them. Those who have the presence of Christ in their lives. If you have the presence, if you have Christ in you and you have the hope of glory, you are part of this body. It doesn't matter whether you are in whatever name of the church or ministry or group you belong. As long as you have Jesus Christ in you, you are part of this body. And it doesn't matter the name of your church or what seems to be happening in your church. 
and you do not have Jesus Christ in you, you are not part of the body of Christ. I'm saying this because there are people who belong to certain church denomination and group. And unfortunately, they make them understand that they are the only one who will go to heaven because of certain doctrine they practice. And they, they mess up because the number of people in that church may not make it to heaven. <clears throat> it depends on the presence of Christ in you that makes the hope of glory. And I want us to understand why Jesus, apart from the individual believers, we as human beings have a, 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 a structure. There is, they, they, we, we are grouped and we walk in a group and many times the Lord shows it. Every if you look at the scripture, the people who were children of Abraham, every one of them had a mark. I mean, the males, everyone was supposed to have a mark that differentiated that male from any other male that was not part of the covenant of Abraham and did not come from Abraham's loin and the, the, the loin of Jacob. Because what covenant God gave to Abraham was transferred to Isaac. And from Isaac to Israel, that's Jacob, who became Israel. And then everyone that is a male, as a symbol, as a mark, must be circumcised. Must be circumcised. We are talking about physically circumcised as a male. And it was a mark they had. But, but God still speak to them as a nation, as a people. And this is what happened and I want you to go with me to the book, you know, to the book of Mark and even the book of John, whichever one, our technical team, uh, uh, my, my, my dear reader, the pastor, Donna, will be looking at where Jesus entered the temple. Jesus entered the temple and overthrew the, the 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 tables. Why? Because he was preparing a people, a people God expected to prepare his people for himself. And I want you to understand it was a demonstration of what God has in mind for the body of Christ. Because the nation of Israel was the only symbol of the people that God had until Jesus Christ brought the church into being. Until Jesus Christ gave birth to the church. If you allow me to use the word. Until Jesus Christ put in place his church. It, the, 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 he went into the temple to show what he meant by putting a nation, a people that belong to God in the form that God can walk and operate among them. That's when he entered the temple. He, he used a whip and overturned their tables and declared, my house shall be a house of prayer, not a place of thieves and darkness. Yes? 
John 2 from verse 15. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Amen. Good. And this is exactly what the Lord is saying. The body of Christ today, the condition of the church, as we know it in the physical, I'm not talking about the, the, the mystery body. I'm not talking about the spiritual body, but I'm talking about the, the structure, the organization, the various denominations and groups and ministries. If we look at the condition of the church, it is very deplorable. Very deplorable. It's full of merchandise. It's full of envy, conflict. It is full of schism. It's full of conflict. It is the, the church has been it, it is full of worldliness, pride. It's full of immorality. The enemy has come into the church with falsehood, false doctrine. There are more false teachers and false prophets today in, in the church than in the past. Worldliness, immorality, adultery and fornication, Recording in progress. The, the loss of the flesh in form of pornography, in form of wickedness, nudeness. These things are there. Perversion, abomination of homosexuality, lesbianism, and all manner of abomination, witchcraft, necromancy, court or courtism, all these things are in the church. And so the, the enemy is bringing darkness and sin in the church. But Jesus will not allow the enemy to take over the church. There are remnants who are in these ministries organizations, denominations, groups, people who have been chosen and God is pruning those individuals. But God is also pruning the church, the denomination. God is ready to overthrow and bring judgment because judgment is going to start first in the body of Christ. The Lord is going to overthrow so many idols and idolatry. So many setups, things that have been set that ought not to be in the body of Christ. The worldliness, the lust of the flesh, materialism, false doctrine, false prophecy, false teaching. Pride and selfishness. God is going to overthrow them. That is why you see everybody want to do their own thing. Because everybody wants to be seen. You ask yourself, humility is no more there. And so it is about people are tripping over themselves. It's all about money and what people can grab and get. 
it, it has become a place of lies, a place of destruction instead of salvation. And the Lord is saying, I'm coming for a glorious church to take the bride to glory. But is, is the Lord going to come and rapture the entire church, the, the, the physical church, the way it is now, without cleansing? No. The Lord is going to put his pruning tool and prune the church. The Lord is going to bring a cleansing sponge and clean the church. The Lord is preparing a glorious church, not a dilapidated church. And as part of that church, the Lord is saying to you, get ready because you are a part of the move of God. God is already on the move. And God is going to restore the teaching of righteousness. God is going to restore the fear of God in the church. God is going to restore holiness and holy living. Now today, a number of people are hiding in, in the cloak of faith, of preaching of faith. And they use faith for worldliness. I mean, the preaching of faith is very important. But what is driving it? What is the motive? The most of them don't even know what faith is all about. It's all about what many of them to them is all about what they can gather, what they can get. And the people are afraid today to speak the truth one to another. You know, somebody told me, well, you know, um, we cannot criticize another we cannot criticize another minister of God. We must not say anything against them. Somebody asked me a question. What do I think about what do I think about having in the church you know um, bottle of water, bottle of pepper, bottle of salt, bottle of oil and you know Having them, you pray over them and use them at home. I say to the person, Did, is there any way in the Bible you see that? What is going on there is spiriticism. It's a form of witchcraft. But it's, it, it's a kind of what you may call charismatic witchcraft. When people are deceived, why do you need to, 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 to carry a bottle of pepper? Bottle of, I'm talking about pepper. Bottle of pepper. Bottle of oil. Bottle of salt. You know, uh, 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 and all manner of things. And then water. When the one, the man prayed over is finished, you begin to fret. So your faith is no longer in the power of God and God himself, but on what a man can pray. And then I was reminded that, look, you know, uh, people pray over handkerchief and you have to hide it in your bosom or carry it wherever you, you are going as a process to protection and anointing. What has this become? It is to take the attention of people who have come into the church. To take the attention of the flock from Christ to the individual who is praying over handkerchief and praying over salt and praying over water and praying over paper and praying over uh, oil. These are the dilapidated form, the deplorable condition of the church. And Jesus will not take such a church as bride to his glory. There has to be a cleansing. There has to be an overthrow of evil. 
of witchcraft, of, the, of, of spiritism, of Pocomania spirit, of Cherubim and Seraphim spirit, of Celestial spirit, of spiritism, and of, 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 of necromancy, and all form of, of Satan worship and witchcraft in the church. In the name of being Pentecostal, the Lord will clean his church and bring a glorious church, a church that is holy, pure, a church that is full of righteousness, a church that is full of the, of the fear of the Lord. God is speaking to you. What is the part that you're supposed to play? Now, let me tell you something. The, the, it is a wonderful thing to know that Jesus Christ is not even doing the preparing of his church alone. He's using those who are available to prepare the fellow brethren and to prepare the body. So, and this is what the Lord says in Ephesians chapter 4. Come on, go with me to Ephesians chapter 4 and begin to read from verse 11 to 14. Yes? Okay. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 14. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Brethren, I want you to know that in the midst of the mess that is going on in the world, in the midst of the darkness that is going on even in the church, the Lord has his men and women that he had chosen and ordained to walk under the unction of the Holy Spirit in preparing the body of Christ for glory. Are you going to be a part of this? Or are you a part of messing the church? Or are you a part of being used to prepare the church for glory. The Bible says that God has appointed apostles. He made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be, to, to be evangelists, some to be teachers, some to be pastors. Now, out of some who call themselves apostles are those the devil is using to mess up the church. The, some of the people who call themselves prophets, who call themselves evangelists, who call themselves pastors and teachers. The devil is using them. Did Jesus never appointed or called them those? But the, you know, the title today are so many. You know, people call themselves anything they like and they go by it. But God has not appointed them. But there are so many of these who answer these who carry this emblem and title. And the, the devil is using them to create confusion and problem uh, in the church, bringing more rottenness and decay in the body that's supposed to be glorious. The Lord is going to overthrow every instrument of the enemy and set up his own instrument to prepare the church for glory. And I want you to look at it. That the, the, the will of God is to use you and I to prepare the church. To work with Christ who 
has his process of preparing the body, purifying, pruning, purifying, perfecting. What does he do? What does he use? This is what the, the Bible speaks about what Jesus Christ uses. He uses the word. According to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 26 and 27, Jesus uses his word. The word of God has a purifying power. It has a perfecting power. It has a, 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 a cleansing power. The word of God. Jesus said in John 15, you know, he says in verse 3, the word, you are clean by the, by the word that I speak to you. You are clean by my word. You are made clean. And so when the word is given in the church, the true word of God, the true doctrine under the unction of the Holy Spirit, then for sure the church will be cleansed. Men and women in the church we fear God because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In the word of God, you have the fear of God, which brings, which gives wisdom to people. In the word of God is where the, the desire, the hunger and thirst for righteousness comes through the word of God. Through the word of God, a man or woman who is a believer desire to live righteous. In the word of God, you have the, the materials that will, it, it, it will drive you to want to please God. You want to delight in the Lord. In the word of God is the peace of God. The word, through the word of God, you are able to have peace. You can, you, you can have peace in the, in the midst of storm. Through the word of God, you are able to have faith. Because faith comes through the word. I'm telling you how, what Jesus uses, why the Bible speaks speaks about he cleanses the church. He prepares the church by the word. Because in the word of God, faith comes. Anyone who has the word of God in him is pure. He's going to be purified and made clean and become holy. The word of God generates not only faith, but hope. The word of God also conditions a man for endurance and patience. The word of God. Endurance and patience. Because when you depend on the word, when you look up to the word, you have good success, not only in your spiritual life, but also in your emotional life, and also in your physical life through the word. Knowledge of God comes. Through the word, you have the revelation knowledge of God. And the Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. And that is why Jesus is using his word. There are people who do not want the word of God. It's like they have no appetite for the word of God. There are people who do not want to teach the world. They teach their own thing. They manipulate and confuse people because they don't want to take people into the world. The world is the, the major material that Jesus is using to prepare his bride for glory. And you cannot but listen and, and give attention to the word of God. I'm going to round up by challenging you 
that it, the church is not going to be the way it is. God is about to enter the church and do something that many of us will be crying and shouting. The Lord is going to reorganize things. Men who have deceived and lied and gone astray and led people astray with the overthrow. In many ways, let me, let me tell you, it's not only death, physical death. There are other ways because the righteous may die and the sinner may die. So it, that's not just the only thing. But there are ways God is going to show himself that is angry with those shepherds and those men who have destroyed the sheep, who instead of feeding the sheep, had led the sheep astray. I want you to be a part of those God will use in these last days to prepare the body of Christ for glory, to prepare a glorious church. And finally, it is the will of God that you be a part of the wedding of the Lamb a part of that joy and glory that is going to be consummated according to Revelation chapter 19 verses 5 to 8 especially verse 7 Revelation chapter 5 I mean chapter 19 verses 5 to 8 yes and a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Amen. I want you to continue to read up to verse 10. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying to you and I, before we end this message, whoever you may be, do not depart this life without being sure that you have the hope of glory and that Christ is present in you indeed. Because if Jesus is present in you, you are not going to allow anything, any decay, sin, and things that grieve the Holy Spirit to be in you. The presence of Christ will not permit the presence of Satan and sin. Be sure you have Christ in you, the guarantee of hope of glory, and be sure that you are not despising the process of pruning and purification of God. Do not despise or reject or disdain the divine process of pruning and purification. Because if you do or if you did, 
you will never be a part of the glory that the Lamb will take his bride. He said, blessed are those who are partakers of the supper, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Do you ever wonder if you are going to be a part of it? The Lord is preparing you to be. Do not trample on the grace of God. Do not reject the gift of God. Be ready. It may be sooner than we think. The Lord is saying, I am coming soon. Get ready. Let us pray. Bow your head in prayer. I don't know who you are on this line. And the Lord is speaking to you all this while directly to your situation. You feel weak. You are struggling to keep awake. But it's like Satan and sin is taking you into spiritual slumber. I hear the Lord saying, wake up. Wake up. For those who sleep, sleep in the night. The day has come. Wake up. Shine. The Lord Jesus Christ must be in you. And that means that you must be crucified so that the life you used to live is no longer the one you are living now. Because Christ will want to express his life in you. So begin to pray. And tell the Lord, I surrender. Have your way in my life. Lord Jesus, Be in control according to Galatians chapter 2 so that the life I now live in this flesh will not be a life of shame and disgrace. It will not be a life of carnality and the flesh. It will be a life that will give you glory as you prepare the church for glory, as you prepare a glorious church for yourself. Let me be a part of the marriage supper of the Lamb to enter into the chamber of consummation. Let me not be a waste. Let this life not be a waste. Lord, I surrender to you. Help me not only to be ready, but to be used of you to prepare the flock of God to be ready for glory. Have your way, mighty God. Blessed be your name, O God. Do your work. Let your will be done in the church. Cleanse the church. Prepare the church for yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Brethren, I want you to please prepare your tithes and offering. Prepare your tithes and offering. Wherever you are, do not withdraw your hand from the Lord. Because this is a part of serving the Lord and for the kingdom work. Prepare your tithe and your offering. And of course, we know that you can send your tithe and your offer.